Welcome back. Today on Dialed In DIY, we're taking a look inside a P-Touch label maker. We're gonna rip this thing apart to see how it works and what parts are useful that we can use in another project. This particular label maker no longer could serve its purpose for a couple of reasons. One of the primary ones is the screen no longer worked. It's not very useful if you can't see what you're trying to print. But you know me, the parts inside are always something I can find useful. So I always start off by removing those little rubber feet just to see if there's any screws underneath them that need to come out. This one didn't have any, but there are plenty of screws on the inside that need to come out so that we can separate the two halves of the shell. On this particular model, you hinge open the bottom cover to get to the tape and the batteries. We're taking those out before we do anything else. Then we're going to start to pry carefully on the hinges itself and get this entire section of the cover off. Once I got to this point, I found that there was one last little screw in there holding the body together, and that little orange piece right next to it, that actually is a little cutting device. When it gets activated, there's a blade inside that will pinch and cut the tape in half to get you your new label out. You'll find a couple of key circuit boards on the inside of this thing, and I'm going to go ahead and remove all of the screws that are holding that into place, and then slowly start to take apart the wiring connections so that I can get the pieces out of the shell. On the front side of the label maker, right next to all the keys, there's a face plate. We're going to start working on getting that out of here by slowly prying the tabs that hold it in place free from the plastic. When we flip this back open to look at the inside, you'll notice this little silver kind of a plate on the right hand side. That actually is covering and attached to the key motor and the gears that are on the inside. The motors, as you know, are something that I always like to salvage when I'm working on these kind of projects. There's a little metal piece in here that's connected to the wire tape. That helps to complete a circuit connection. I'm just going to push that back through the case so that we can get all the wires and connectors through and freed. So far, the things we've disconnected helped us to free up the motor and the two gears that are on the connection board for this. This is actually a key part that I am going to keep and use in another project. I like these flatter little DC kind of motors because they're great for a lot of little things where you want to get a motor inside of something, like making a small fan for a project. With the gentle push from the bottom of the case, we can free up that last plate that holds the rest of the gears, as well as the tape drive wheels. When you're trying to print a label, those two little black wheels actually push up against the tape and engage with the set of gears, allowing them to spin and pull the tape through. This little switch that we just freed up is great for another project as well. It's a little momentary switch and you can see the lever. When you depress the lever, it actually completes the connection. There's a lot of fun uses for something like this. This little power board is held in place by the red and black wires that are connected to the battery leads, but the AC plug connector on that orange and blue set of wires also holds it in place, so we're going to free both of those sets of wires up and get this thing out of here. On the board itself, there's actually some nice components, the capacitors, resistors, and all the other little pieces. If I'm not sure what I want to use the components for, I'll often just save them intact, and that way I've got them full and ready to use for whatever I want to do with them in the future. However, if I have a specific use in mind, I'll go ahead and get my soldering iron and a desoldering pump out and start harvesting parts. But for now, I'm going to just continue deconstructing this thing. We're going to go on next to the keypad, and we're going to release all the tabs that are holding it in place. You'll find that once you free up all remaining connections, the little contact board that's used for the keypad will slide out pretty easily. And now you can see the great simplicity of the keypad. It's this little white thing that's made up of different polycarbon contact points that once it pushes against the contact board itself, it completes a connection, so your device knows what letter you pushed. Essentially what you have is each time you push a letter, it works like a mini momentary switch. If you gently press your thumbs against the screen and slide it forward, it will come right out of the case. You can then twist it around and push it back through the case to free up the remaining portion of the chipboard. And there you have it. As usual, there's a lot of little screws, some springs, and the typical motors, chipboards, gears, and plenty of other things that I can use in future projects. If you've watched some of my other deconstruction videos, like the stapler, the Guitar Hero game controller, and of course this one, you'll notice that there's some patterns that are emerging. We seem to always be finding a bunch of springs, momentary switches, capacitors, resistors, and other things, but also a fair amount of little motors and gears. Let's have fun making other things with them. Thank you for watching. Please press like and then subscribe. There will be more dialed in DIY to come.